by conglomerating all those separate entities, he manifested the innumerable mundane universes and himself entered into the innermost recess of every extended conglomerate. At that time, those jivas who had lain dormant during the cataclysm were awakened. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. Those jivas that were merged in Hari at the end of the life of Brahma in the great cataclysm during the preceding age of the universe reappeared in this world in accordance with their former fruitive desires. The same jiva is eternal and is for eternity and without beginning, joined to the Supreme Lord by the tie of eternal kinship. He is transcendental spiritual potency. The divine lotus, which springs from the navel pit of Vishnu, is in every way related to the spiritual tie with all souls and is the origin of four-faced Brahma versed in the four Vedas. On coming out of the lotus, Brahma, being guided by the divine potency, tuned his mind to the act of creation under the impulse of previous impressions. But he could see nothing but darkness in every direction. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. Brahma's impulse for creation arises solely from his previous impressions. All jivas get their nature conformably to their impressions of previous births, and accordingly their activity can have a beginning. It is called the unseen, or the result of one's previous deeds. His natural impulse is formed according to the nature of deeds done by him in a previous kalpa. Some of the eligible jivas also attain to the office of Brahma in this way. Then, the goddess of learning, Saraswati, the divine consort of the Supreme Lord, said thus to Brahma, who saw nothing but gloom in all directions, O oh Brahma, this mantra Clean Krishnaya Govindaya Gopi Janavalabhaya Svaha will assuredly fulfill your heart's desire. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. The mantra, consisting of 18 divine letters prefixed by the Kama Bij, is alone super excellent. It has a twofold aspect. One aspect is that it tends to make the pure soul run after the all-attractive Sri Krishna, the Lord of Gokul and the divine milkmaids. This is the acme of the spiritual tendency of jivas. When the devotee is freed from all sorts of mundane desires and willing to serve the Lord, he attains the fruition of his heart's desire, love of Krishna. But... In the case of the devotee who is not of unmixed aptitude, this super-excellent mantra fulfills his heart's desire also. The transcendental kamabij is inherent in the divine logos, located in Goloka. And the kamabija, pervertedly reflected in worldly affairs, satisfies all sorts of desires of this mundane world. The goddess Saraswati said, O Brahma, do thou practice spiritual association by means of this mantra. Then all your desires will be fulfilled. Brahma, being desirous of satisfying Govinda, practiced cultural arts for Krishna in Goloka, lord of Svetadweep, for a long time. His meditation ran thus. There exists a divine lotus of a thousand petals, augmented by millions of filaments, in the transcendental realm of Goloka. On its whirl, there exists a divine throne upon which is seated Sri Krishna, the form of eternal effulgence of transcendental bliss, playing on his divine flute, resonant with divine sound. He is worshipped by his amorous milkmaids with their respective subjective portions and extensions 
and also by his external energy, who stays outside, embodying all mundane qualities. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. So long as there is any trace of mundane desire in one's heart, it is the object of worship of Maya Devi, Durga, who is to be worshipped by such a person. Nevertheless, the fulfillment of one's heart's desire results from the worship of the object of worship of Maya Devi, and not from the worship of Maya Devi herself. This is in accordance with the shloka, Akama Sarvakamo Va, Moksha Kama Udaradi, Tivrena Bhakti Yogena, Yajeta Purusham Param, Srimad Bhagavatam 2, 3, 10. The meaning of this verse from the Bhagavatam is that though other gods, as distinct manifestations of the Supreme Lord, are bestowers of sundry specific boons, yet a sensible person should worship the all-powerful Supreme Lord, giver of all good, with unalloyed devotion, without worshipping those mundane gift-giving deities. Accordingly, Brahma meditated upon Krishna in Goloka, the object of the worship, from a distance of Maya Devi. True devotion is unalloyed devotional activity freed from all mundane desire. The devotion of Brahma, etc., is not unmixed devotion. But there is a stage of unmixed predilection, even in the devotion for the attainment of one's selfish desire. This has been fully described in the concluding five shlokas of this work. That is the easiest method of divine service prior to the attainment of self-realization by fallen souls. Then Gayatri, mother of the Vedas, being made manifest or imparted by the divine sound of the flute of Sri Krishna, entered into the lotus mouth of Brahma through his eight ear holes. The lotus-born Brahma, having received the Gayatri, sprung from the flute song of Sri Krishna, attained the status of twice-born, having been initiated by the supreme primal preceptor, Godhead himself. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. The sound of Krishna's flute is the transcendental blissful sound. Hence, the archetype of all Vedas is present in it. The Gayatri is Vedic rhythm. It contains a brief meditation and prayer. Kama Gayatri is the highest of all the Gayatris because the meditation and prayer contained in it are full of the perfect transcendental sportive activities which are not to be found in any other Gayatri. The Gayatri that is attained as the sequel of the 18-lettered mantra is Kama Gayatri, which runs thus, Klim Kama Devaya Vidmehe Pushpabanaya Dimihi Tanno Nanga Pratodayat. In this Gayatri, the realization of the transcendental pastimes of Sri Gopi Janavalaba, after perfect meditation, and the prayer for attainment of the transcendental God of Love, are indicated. In the spiritual world, there is no better mode of endeavor for securing the super-excellent ras bidud love. As soon as the Gayatri entered into the ear holes of Brahma, he became twice-born and began to chant the Gayatri. Whoever has received the same Gayatri in reality has attained his spiritual rebirth. The status of a twice-born that is obtained in accordance with one's worldly nature and lineage by the fettered souls in this mundane world is far inferior to that of the twice-born who obtains admission into the transcendental world because initiation or acquisition of transcendental birth as a result of spiritual initiation is the highest of glories inasmuch as the jiva is thereby enabled to attain the transcendental realm. Enlightened by the recollection of that Gayatri, 
embodying the three Vedas, Brahma became acquainted with the expanse of the ocean of truth. Then he worshipped Sri Krishna, the essence of all Vedas, with the following hymn. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's purport. Brahma thought within himself, By recollection of Kama Gayatri, it seems that I am the eternal maidservant of Krishna. Though the other mysteries in regard to the condition of the maidservant of Krishna were not revealed to him, Brahma, by dint of his searching self-consciousness, became well acquainted with the ocean of truth. All the truths of the Vedas were revealed to him, and with the help of those essences of the Vedas, he offered this hymn to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Sriman Mahaprabhu has taught this hymn to his favorite disciples, inasmuch as it fully contains all transcendental truths regarding Vaishnava philosophy. Readers are requested to study and try to enter into the spirit of this hymn with great care and attention as a regular daily function. 